Hey guys, here's a review for a new sci-fi thriller novel called Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I received this book from the publisher, Crown. came in a really nice package and I was really happy to get it. was really looking forward to it and wasn't let down. I read this, and Giselle can attest to this, I read this in like 24 hours and stayed up all night finishing it, which I hadn't done in a while, so that's just a, a huge plus for it right off the bat. So this is a story that follows Jason Desson, a man that, when he was younger, getting his PhD as a physicist, would have been easily considered a genius, with a huge career in science ahead of him, his research possibly game-changing and worthy of prizes and grants and a life lived in luxury, but he's happy without all of that. He's got his wife, Daniela, his son, Charlie, and a comfortable life teaching. He's happy with the choices he's made. Right? One night, specifically a Thursday night, family night, Daniela encourages him to go off and celebrate for a bit with one of his friends, a fellow scientist, that did continue on with his research and has won something big for it. Jason contemplates, as any normal person might, the road not taken, the one where he had done the same. Assuming it went well, is it possible to compare that plausible life with the one he actually has? Is happiness measurable? Is he happier now than he would have been? Well, on this night, after leaving the bar where he and his friend were talking and celebrating, Jason is kidnapped by a fully masked man. He is taken to a, a strange location, drugged up, and left. This man had been so aggressive, so threatening, so full of indifference towards Jason's life. Who could have possibly built that kind of hatred for him? These questions go unanswered as Jason drifts off and wakes up in a world not his own. There is no Daniela or Charlie in this life, and that hypo hypothetical research he would have done had he not met Daniela, it's come to an interesting climax, because of which the people in this world that isn't his shower him with praise and questions he can't answer. There's, uh, there's this quote right on the first page that, uh, that says, let's see, no one tells you it's all about to change, to be taken away. There's no proximity alert, no indication that you're standing on the precipice. And maybe that's what makes tragedy so tragic. Not just what happens, but how it happens. A sucker punch that comes at you out of nowhere when you're least expecting it. No time to flinch or brace. So, now, I, I, I love stories like this. I love this idea of every choice you make matters. But whatever choice you do make, there's a whole new world out there for you to enter into as you make that choice. A brand new world is made every time anyone on all of Earth has made has to make a decision, and those infinite possibilities are out there waiting to send you into one of them. One of my favorite movies is called Mr. Nobody, and it kind of follows this idea, this idea on choices, on what kind of life our choices and the choices of others leads us to that every outcome is as real as the next, every outcome as important as the next. It really makes me think of those choices that I've made, and each of those choices, even if I could change, I wouldn't, because I'm, I'm happy to be where I am. I'm, to get personal, I'm the happiest person that I've ever been, and the choices I've made led me to this exact moment. If I hadn't joined booktubing, for example, book reviewing things, I literally wouldn't be where I am right now, in this state I live in right now with my wife, with the job I love, with the idea and thoughts and feelings that I have right now. So throughout this book, I get where Jason's mindset is. He's got all of these great possibilities laid out for him, so many possibilities and endless choices, but above all, what he wants is to get back from where he has come from, because the choices he, he as he exists in this book, made to get where he is, is it's important, it's, it's significant. Blake Crouch does a great job using little differences in choices Jason's made to really make who he is as a character apparent. I think the character grows a lot throughout the story, but mainly he grows to really know himself, who he is right now, with all the choices he's made, better than he ever could have, and that translates really well to our understanding of him. And this book, it reminds me of like one of those rides, those roller coasters that go from like zero to 60 in less than a second, and you have to keep your head back before the ride actually starts to avoid whiplash. And this is a crazy ride in its own right. It moves at an unfettered rate, even from the beginning, laying the groundwork from the first chapter of what's to come. I have a certain love for scientific ideas. The, the mix of physics and philosophy that exists in this book, and other books like it, really appeals to me, someone that's interested in these scientific ideas. Actual practice of science and mathematics, while I, I can take that too, to a certain extent, and enjoy it in the same capacity, there's a certain sense of, aha, when you get something in a book like this. And it's satisfying, because in this plot, there's plenty of things that give you a good idea about what will happen next. You can really sit there and be like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure these ideas in this set of events will lead to this outcome, and then be right about it. But 
still be left in those knots, left in the knots of what the author's weaving, as you come to realize, oh wait, this adds even more to the ever-building plot, and I've got to use reasoning and thinking to figure out the next layer. It's not the most difficult thing you'll ever read, it's great in its uh, complex simplicity, I guess, and gives a great back and forth of satisf satisfaction at figuring out something versus figuring out or experiencing the next thing. It's compelling, is basically what that boils down to, and a lot of that is the writing. At times it seems there's more punctuation on the page than there are words. It's quick, it's to the point, and Blake Crouch hardly lets you spend time in any one place before pulling you along again. It's a lot of fun. On top of that, there's still some great descriptive imagery. There's this, this one scene with Jason in a, a certain box, if you will, with a certain something happening around him, and it's so vividly in my head, it's an image that's literally stuck with me since finishing this book. It's a st staggering image that may come from his writing, or just from the subject matter, or a combination of both, but it's pretty great. And like the writing style itself, it's it's quick, it's it's this, 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 bam, scene laid up before you and Jason firmly planted within it. Overall though, this was just a lot of fun. I devoured it. Sometimes I get overhyped up about books like that, that I read super fast and can't book down and come out feeling great about. I may have missed some of its flaws, but it's a good story. And the ending, the last 10% or so, is especially killer and I really liked it a lot. It made me feel kind of small and insignificant, but also made me feel there's a lot of importance in all of the choices that not only I make, but everyone else makes as well. And I, I just, I really liked it a lot and I really recommend it. I think it's a, a really great and entertaining book, especially if you want something quick. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you've read this, let me know what you thought about it. If you're interested in it, let me know. Let me know. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time with more.